So welcome to new topic AC potentiometer. We know a potentiometer is an instrument used to measure the unknown voltage by balancing it with a known voltage. By standard, balancing with a standard voltage, we are finding the unknown voltage in a potentiometer. We have studied two types of potentiometer DC and AC. DC potentiometer which we are going we are measuring only the magnitude of unknown voltage we know that for dc there is only magnitude no phase displacement so dc voltage we are going, measuring only the magnitude of unknown voltage but in ac volt potentiometer we can able to measure both magnitude and phase displacement of unknown voltage by comparing it with a known voltage there are two types of ac potentiometer polar type and coordinate type First we can see what is polar type potentiometer. Polar type potentiometer another name is known as Drysdale potentiometer. Drysdale means uh, why got its name uh, due to because uh, this is, he is the scientist who discovered this polar type potentiometer Drysdale. This is the name of scientist. First we can see the construction. So this is the structure of a Drysdale polar type potentiometer from the name itself this uh, pol the name is polar type potentiometer from the name itself we can see the unknown emf is obtained in the form of magnitude angle theta that is magnitude angle phase displacement we know that every voltage a sinusoidal voltage is represented as how will you represent the instantaneous value of sinusoidal voltage v equal to V equal to Vm sin omega t plus theta. This is the instantaneous equation of voltage. Vm is maximum value of voltage. Omega t is the reference. And here uh, theta is the phase displacement. So this, this, is, can, this equation can be written in polar form as V angle theta. So you can able to measure the magnitude and phase displacement of unknown voltage using this AC dry scale potentiometer. And in this uh, dry scale potentiometer, you there are two scales are used. One is used for measuring the magnitude of voltage and another is used to measure the phase displacement of voltage. The magnitude of voltage is measured from this scale, that is slide wire scale. And the phase displacement of unknown EMF is obtained from this scale. This is circular scale. So using the scale you are getting the phase displacement theta. You have to note the theta value by reading from this po position. And the unknown EM of magnitude is obtained from this scale. So using uh, as the, the working principle is same as DC potentiometer for measuring the magnitude of in EMF. So let us see the construction. Two separate scales are used to measure the magnitude and phase angle. So this is one scale, this is another scale. The scale is used for measuring the phase displacement. This is used to measure the unknown EMF. In phase shifting transformer, the stator consists of two separated winding. This is an important part of the Drysdale potentiometer is stator and rotor winding. This is one state, two stator windings. One stator winding is directly connected to the AC supply, but Second one is connected to the other stator winding, to the first stator winding through an RC circuit. Using an RC circuit, you are connecting the second stator winding across the AC supply. Here it is connected across the stator, uh, AC supply using resistor RNC. What is the purpose of this RNC? RNC circuit provide two purpose. One is to make a phase shift of 90 degree between these two windings stator winding 1 and stator winding 2 the phase displacement between the two will be 90 degrees provided by rc circuit and the another purpose is to provide constant current to the rotor okay that i will explain so here there is a rotor what is the uh, function of a rotor if you are sub giving an ac supply to the stator winding what happened? A current is given to stator winding, so there will be a flux linkage. 
due to flux linkage if you are placing a coil in the vicinity of this flux linkage as per faraday's law and emf is induced so if you are placing a rotor in between the stator winding which is displaced 90 degree and emf is induced in the rotor winding and due to that emf a current will be generated and that current we are supplying to the slide wire are you remembering the dc potentiometer see in dc potentiometer see how you are going to supply the current to slide wire using a battery this is the battery you are using to provide constant current to the slide wire here instead of that battery we are using this arrangement so what is the purpose of this rotor winding in order to provide the constant current to the slide wire so instead of battery current is provided to the slide wire using this rotor winding and how this rotor winding get current if you are giving ac supply to the stator winding and emf is induced in the rotor winding that current is given to the slide wire okay next we can see the working so see the unknown emf to be measured the ac unknown emf to be measured is connected between this test terminal t1 and t2 so in this position you have to connect the unknown emf we know that unknown emf is having the magnitude v angle a displacement theta of or phase display phase angle theta this voltage you are applying to this slide wire and what is the working of a potentiometer in a dc potentiometer what you are doing you are moving the unknown emf is connected to the galvanometer through the sliding contact and you move the position of the sliding contact such that at a particular point galvanometer shows zero deflection and you find the if galvanometer shows zero deflection means the voltage across this slide wire and voltage across the unknown emf both are same then only galvanometer current is zero so you you will find the value of emf e1 how will you find e1 e1 equal to this is the equation for e1 e1 equal to current through the wire what is current through the wire i let i be the current through the wire into what is the resistance of this wire let small r be the resistance per unit length and what is the total length suppose uh, up to this point that is the point at which galvanometer shows zero deflection b l1 let that point be l1 so e1 equal to i into r into l1 this is the voltage across slide wire and that voltage is same as your unknown voltage unknown emf e in this way you are finding the unknown emf in dc potentiometer the same method you are using for this ac potentiometer also so unknown emf is connected and galvanometer you are moving the pointer of galvanometer uh, in, in ac potentiometer one thing you have to remember is you have to adjust the pointer of ga uh, galvanometer or slide wire as well as the rotor position both are to be adjusted rotor position and the galvanometer or key position to be adjusted adjusted such that this galvanometer shows zero deflection at a particular point this galvanometer shows zero deflection and that adjustment is done by uh, simultaneously adjusting the value of rotor position as well as the slide wire position so using the slide wire position you can able to find the magnitude of induced emf that is using this method e equal to i into r into l and by reading the rotation of this uh, rotor that is you are shifting this or you are adjusting or rotating the rotor such that this galvanometer shows zero so by seeing the rotor position how much it get displaced from the zero value that is noted from the scale so you can able to get the value of emf as unknown voltage angle theta and there is a small derivation the emf induced in the stator winding 1 b e1 which is given as k into i constant current into sin omega t into cos phi so sin omega t is the 
current reference current i sin omega t and the displacement of the rotor position is cos theta not phi it is cos theta and this is for stator winding 1 and the second stator winding second stator winding is displaced by 90 degrees so you have to give a 90 degree displacement for this k i sin omega t plus 90 cos theta plus 90 so this is minus k i cos omega t cos theta and the resultant total induced emf is obtained as e equal to k i sin omega t cos theta minus cos omega t sin theta that is k i sin omega t minus theta where phi gives the phase angle this is the derivation of your induced emf